Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you this, the second Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. The order of service is Divine Service Setting 3, found on page 184. One note concerning the service, the Old Testament reading is uh, misprinted. It should be Exodus 33, starting at the 12th verse. And so we hear in that account where God moons Moses. So uh, seeing uh, God's backside uh, as uh, we cannot see the full glory of God and live. So that's what the Lord give, gave Moses. So uh, you can think about that this morning. So, so. Uh, the order, uh, so it, this order of service is as usual, and so we begin with our, the ringing of the bells, uh, our, uh, introducing our opening hymn, and then we sing our opening hymn, 399. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, 
a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name, Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. May sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament for the second Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord is written in the second book of Moses, commonly called Exodus, the 33rd chapter. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways, that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will, go, will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your ways, or is it not in your going with us, so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft on, of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. The epistle is written in St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome the twelfth chapter. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity the one who leads with zeal, and one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. 
Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do what he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water now become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servant, servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus never does what anyone expects he will do. Last week, John expected to be baptized by Jesus, but Jesus ended up rebuking him and then subjected himself to John's sticky locust-covered hands and the muddy water of the Jordan River. Today, to begin his ministry, he goes to a wedding with his mother and his new wet-behind-the-ears disciples. With the sins of mankind weighing heavily on his shoulders, he goes to a party. Imagine what he looked like in that crowd. Forty days in the wilderness, no food, no drink, constantly being harassed by Satan, and now he's there surrounded by the opposite of fasting, excess, gluttony, and much debauchery. Oh, the inhumanity. Jesus ought to make quick work of this people, don't you think? When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. Here's what we all expect from Jesus when he opens his mouth. Good. I'm glad you drunks are out of wine. You need to dry out and think about what you've done. You should be ashamed. But that's not at all what he says. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. Excuse me? 180 gallons of wine to people who are already well drunk? Jesus needs to just sit down for a second. Clearly he's a little malnourished and not in his right mind. What is his problem? Again, Jesus never does what anything or what everyone thinks or expects or thinks that he should do. His baptism and now his first miracle proved to be the beginning of his offending and befuddling of all men's reason and senses. He's not going to do what men want him to do. He is going to do what he wills. And it will always be for the good of those who receive what he does. The Apostle John starts his inspired gospel differently than the other evangelists. Matthew, Mark, and Luke have done well enough to establish that Jesus was the promised seed of the woman. They all trace Jesus' lineage back through the centuries. Luke all the way even back to Adam. There was no need for John to reinvent the wheel. Instead, John determined to go a different route. He would present his account of Jesus' life and ministry as a bookend to the Word of God. He would tie a perfect bow and show how Jesus redeems fallen man all the way back to the garden. In the beginning was the Word. John highlights that Jesus is about fixing what happened in the garden. He is the Word made flesh, the very same Word that created all things, starting with, let there be light. That Word, that light, was the beginning. It, or rather He, was everything. When sin entered in, darkness brought its shadow and concealed Him. With the light and life rejected, death then supplanted God. Wisdom, love, and life were shrouded now, shrouded from comprehension. Instead of waiting on God and being still, we reasonably did what we thought was best. Adam and Eve went to their fig leaves and trees, but that didn't work. 
Even when we convinced ourselves with saying, God will understand, we know what he will do, or at least what he should do. Never mind you that our first parents didn't run to God, they ran from him. He had to come to them instead. He had to chase them down. So it is with the lie. Our fallen reason and senses do not understand God at all. When Jesus shines, we comprehend him not. not he never does what we expect him to do. A wedding seems an odd place to start. But considering John's purpose and his connection to Genesis, the beginning, Jesus is doing exactly the right thing. He is redeeming that which was lost, broken and destroyed in the garden. Adam and Eve, as perfect humans, bore God's image. God created Adam and out of his side fashioned his beloved, Eve. God would take woman and give her to the man to have and to hold from this day forward, even forevermore. What God put together, let no man put asunder. There was perfect union made by God. It was glorious. It was beautiful. It was perfect love. It was marriage. And they were naked and not afraid. There was absolutely nothing to hide and for which to be ashamed. But then sin entered the, the creation. There would now be something to hide and from which to be ashamed. The love of the other was perverted, twisted to become a love of the self. This darkness is why fallen men cannot comprehend the light of Christ. The image of God, the God of love, was utterly broken. Jesus who is perfect love in the flesh, cannot be understood because we are too busy worrying about our sin, ourselves. And so we are incapable of truly seeing him and understanding what he does and why. And so we will never understand why he does what he does. When we begin to see, though, when we start to understand. It is only by God's revealing through his word. The light shines in the darkness. God never waits for things to just be right, ripe for the taking. He might be the eternal God, but he doesn't have that much time. He is God, and he will make it work. And he it is he who, by his grace and mercy, opens the eyes of the blind to see. John's gospel today is of God's revelation, and so it opens our eyes. It opens our ears. It is the light of God bathing his people with his radiant light to cause us to receive him, to receive him and his light, his word, his Jesus. It is so bright that it drives out all darkness. It drowns out all other words, all other lies. It draws our attention from ourselves to Him and what He does for our good, even in spite of us, us drunk donkeys. The wine of Cana, seen from the perspective of the one giving it, shows us God as He truly is, the God of love. The God of love covering our naked shame with something better than what anyone can fashion themselves. He gives of his divine love, his love to those who will misuse and abuse it. Even what he has already given is taken advantage of. The perfect gifts of God, the perfect gift of his creation, were abused and drunkenly turned into, or turned to in order to soothe and to comfort those fig leaves and those trees. And we do the same in our own lives. But that will not do. That's not the problem. The problem there is us. 
It's not the giver. The perfect gifts of the creation were abused and drunkenly turned to in order to soothe and to comfort, but then God comes with his creation to give us what he would have us have. He comes with bloody skins to cover our first parents, to cover them and their death, their sin. He did not come to destroy them, as one might think. And even after giving those skins, more than that, he then promises to be their only Savior. He promised to send his only begotten Son through the Virgin Mary. For that promise, man has done nothing but drunkenly sinned that grace may abound. Sinning. Because we all eventually think that God will forgive us. And here's the kicker. He does. Eventually, though, we think that God would cut us off. He doesn't. He gives more wine. He gives of himself all the more. He gives more grace and mercy. He never gives up. He gives more love because, thanks be to him, he doesn't do what anyone would expect him to do. He addresses the problem by never ceasing to be valid, lavish with himself and his gifts, even to the extent of looking wasteful. He gives to sinners who inevitably will continue sinning. What we need to see in this is not that God is insane, but that we need to see that we are the ones who make him insane. It is our sin, our attempts to fix it, which never work, that require drastic measures, like more wine, or sending his own son in the flesh to shed his blood on the cross to forgive you and all men, to forgive me, to forgive even those who drive the nails and who cried out, crucify him. God's love, His grace and His mercy, His lavishness do not excuse us or our sins. We do not go on sinning that grace may abound, but rather they show us, they give us opportunity, a cause to pause and to acknowledge that indeed we need saving. Instead of li living naked and afraid of sin, death, and the devil, we need to see him as he is for us, as our only hope and comfort. The one who covers us with his forgiveness and his righteousness. And to receive it not as cheap, but worth his very own blood. For it is he who redeems us and provides us with such bounty in his gospel, his sacrifice, the brokenness of our marriages, the drunkenness that separates us from one another, the blemishes of the church and her members are covered by him and his perfect righteousness. They are covered, you are covered in such a way that many aren't even aware of what Jesus has done. It is only those who hear, those who hear the word of God and eat at his lavish feast who know where the wine comes from. It comes from Jesus. Jesus who gives of himself, who gives his crucified and resurrected body and blood under the bread and wine for us Christians to eat and to drink. And he does it for the forgiveness of our sins over and over and over again. And he also does it to strengthen our faith that we would continue to look to him, to hear his word, to grab hold of him as the one who gives us what is good, right, and salutary. He gives us himself. He gives himself to allow us to see, to see he has, but what he is, is true, what he truly is, that he is beyond our reasoning. He is beyond what we think is right, and that he is what is good. So thanks be to God, Jesus doesn't do what anyone 
ever expects he should. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. We rise for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we remember the family of Dolores May Luzier, who was laid to rest from the church yesterday afternoon. May her soul rest in peace to wait the resurrection on the last, last day. Amen. Amen. We also keep in our prayers Kenneth Kaiser, or Kenneth, Ken Kaiser who is at, the, at Aurora, uh, receiving treatment for AFib. He will be undergoing heart catheterization this afternoon. We also keep in our prayers Ellison Butch Remert, Detlef Pete S. Musen, Philip Gruthausen, who will be undergoing cataract surgery soon. And also we keep in our families, the, uh, or keep in our prayers, the family of Elaine Bickle, uh, mother of Jason Collins College roommate, who fell asleep in the Lord this last week as well. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, how awesome are your deeds. For it pleased you to send your Son into our world to rescue us from sin, death, and the devil. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we would cling in faith to Jesus Christ, our Bridegroom, and receive from him the forgiveness, life, and salvation in his holy church. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, look with favor upon Matthew, our Synod President, John, our district president, Joseph, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in Christ, that the holy gospel would be preached among us in its purity and the sacraments administered according to Christ's institution. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father in heaven, at Cana your son showed his divinity by turning water into wine. Through, this, through his gift you have shown your favor, and blessing to those entering the estate of holy matrimony. As you bless this sacred institution, protect it from all evil forces that would put asunder what you have established for our good. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, bestow your grace on all nations of the earth, especially our country. Bless those in authority and all citizens that those who labor in their rightful callings 
would prosper. Defend us from natural disaster, war, pestilence, famine, and every evil. Let useful arts flourish among us and care for our schools, that our children would grow in knowledge and Christian virtue. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son showed divine compassion even for a groom who ran out of wine. By your Spirit, <clears throat> give us compassionate hearts to notice the needs of others. Support especially Kenneth Kaiser, Ellison Butch Riemert, uh, Detlef Piet Esmussen, Philip Grudhausen, and those we now name in our hearts. Comfort also the lonely, the depressed, the mentally ill, and, those, and any who feel abandoned. Let them know you and your son, who rejoices over them as a bridegroom over his bride. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth and giver of life, we thank you for all the memories you granted to our sisters, Dolores May Luzier and Elaine Bickle, during their earthly lives, especially for calling them to faith in Jesus Christ. Comfort the survivors who mourn their deaths, that we will ever be prepared to die in the faith, and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, grant your Holy Spirit to those who approach the altar this day, that they would receive the holy sacrament of Christ's very body and blood in faithful rep repentance and to their abundant blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, from the dust of death through the waters of baptism, you take from the side of Christ crucified a bride without spot or wrinkle, let us find comfort and peace in Him. And let us join the whole body of Christ in the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom, where the wine of joy and gladness never runs out. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and sound, you who tarry, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to who you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In Him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glory, us name, evermore praising you and saying, oh. Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you with the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. We bow to God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you with the one true faith, throughout this life and a life to come. Be part in God's peace, your sins are forgiven.
and blood of our Lord and Savior.
salvation thou hast prepared before the face of all people Allah I do light in the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen Oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Jesus has come and brings pleasures eternal. Alpha Omega.
You may be seated. The Lord's blessings to you again this uh, second Sunday after Epiphany. A few announcements concerning this coming week. There is no uh, class for tomorrow night for uh, Martin Luther King. The public schools don't have school, so uh, I, we do not have class tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night. So no class tomorrow night. Tuesday, we will resume our class uh, on our, for our new members as well as for a refresher for everybody else. We'll be covering uh, the second article of the Creed. Um, and then Thursday morning, Judges, we will continue with the end of Samson's story in Judges 16, I believe it is. Um, I also have a question for all of you as time goes on. Come and talk to me. This Lent, I am going to be offering a midday service. Uh, so for those who are not as comfortable driving at night, um, I need to know what time to have that service. So uh, if you have any input, any times that would be uh, you know, of, of preference to you, uh, it will be exactly the same service uh, as the evening service. And uh, this year we will have the Lord's Supper during the season of Lent, uh, including Ash Wednesday uh, and every we- Wednesday uh, during the week. So even if you come, if we decide at one o'clock, the Lord's Supper will be offered in the same sermon, the same service will be offered at that time uh, for all you who uh, prefer not to drive at night or in sketchy weather. So um, so come and talk to me, give me your input, tell me what you think uh, uh, would be a good time to meet and I'll go from there. Yes, Bronwyn. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry. I didn't realize you noticed that I was... Yeah, no, there you go. Okay. And so it's out here. It's just bags of popcorn. It's on the table. Um, I think it's $4 for a bag. Or like so there's, there's popcorn for sale in the, for, to help uh, Allure's uh, music department. And it'd be great to have that so you can watch the Vikings game this afternoon and, <laughs> and, and have, uh, have popcorn to watch it with you. And watch them probably crash and burn. I will give you that. I, I'm not. Oh. We, I, I mean, no team in, has won 13 games and then have a scoring differential of negative three. So I, I still don't understand how that works. But um, so uh, have that for Alora uh, this morning. Yes, Jamie. The LWML, I oh, yes. The meeting is on Thursday, not Tuesday. It is for so many years. I just, so it is Thursday, just Thursday. Thurs- Thursday at 630. So yeah. please be there. I'll be there. So maybe that'll make you not want to come. But I will be there. <laughs> I will be there, so uh, we look forward to that night uh, and to share, share time together and, and, and God's word. So, any other announcements? Seeing none, may God keep you safe, safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless. Mm-hmm.